Hello, I'm Theron Cortens and I offer courses through Soul School. Welcome to this new series. I'm making it in January 2023 and it's all about the laws of creation. Now I've been on this planet in this present life for quite a few decades now and during that time I have completed lots of creative projects. The kind of things that people talk about as creative. Like I've written books, I've um, designed costumes, I run a dressmaker's business, I uh, combined with my husband who's a songwriter to create a musical show. All of those things tend to come under the umbrella of creativity and people have often said to me and to my husband when he was still alive, oh aren't you creative? But my response to that is everybody is creative and we are all creating things all the time. They might not be artistic creations like the ones that I've been engaged with but even making a nice meal for your friends to come round is a creative task. Well, actually, just making the dinner every day would be a creative task. Or making sure your paperwork is tidy. That's a creative task. It doesn't have a particular thing that somebody's going to look at and say, oh, isn't that creative of you? But the activities that we are engaged with all the time can come under that umbrella of creativity because we are engaged in the creative process that is running through creation all the time. So everything that's going on is like a flow of creativity and if we engage with that flow conscientiously, we can see that there are ways to move ourselves towards abundance. Because abundance is part of that creative flow. Nature is abundant. That is what nature is. And even during winter months, when nature seems to have gone to sleep, there is activity going on that is preparing for the next opening up in the springtime for the blossoming and the fruiting. So we can see in the cycles of nature that abundance is always unfolding itself. And we can participate in that. We can conscientiously understand, oh, this is a good time to start this new project. Or when I start this new project, I need to make sure this is in place and then I shall understand the next stage and the next stage and the next stage. And that's a very useful thing. Uh, Will, my husband and I, we would often talk about our creative projects and discuss, well, you know, why is it that some of Theodore's short stories are still in the drawer and they haven't come to, quote, fruition, they haven't been published. And so we would look at what are creative processes that take us from the idea, which is abstract, to the concrete, which is there in your hands, possibly, or if it's an event, it's a you know, something that people recognise, that gap between abstract idea and manifestation is what we have to understand in order to make one match up with the other. So in the laws of creation, what we're looking at is how does it occur to us to have an idea in the first place. Where does that come from? What is the true source of 
inspiration and then what processes can we take that through what stages in order to make that wonderful idea we had come into reality so in the ancient teachings uh, of the mystics and the philosophers and so forth there is a recognition that you can mark out certain stages in the creative process from the invisible or the transcendent is the word often used that which is just beautiful clouds castles in the clouds what can you do to ensure if you choose that that is not just a castle in the clouds but it's a castle that you where you can walk in through the front door and those stages can be applied to any creative project it might be actually a building one of my favorite stories is about uh, an actor called Sam Wanamaker who had this castle in the clouds idea that Shakespeare's Globe Theatre, as it was in Elizabethan times, could be reconstructed in London, approximately where it was originally. Now that's a mega creative project, a serious one. And very sadly, Wanamaker didn't actually live to see the first staged show when it happened, but it did happen. And there were lots and lots of um, mini processes going on within that larger, uh, long, several decades long. I can't remember how many actually, but it went on for a long time to get that to happen. And lots of other people got involved. But the original inspiration and the vision came from one person, and that was the spark if you like the divine fire behind the idea while he was alive it was constant for him so very few of us would ever be involved in a project of that magnitude but anything that we want to manifest in our lives uh, to realize from some invisible hmm could i do that it might be a journey and not a thing or it might just be a, a gathering of people an event you know and all of those important uh, markers in your personal life will be a demonstration of your capacity not only to be inspired but to then actually bring that inspiration through the necessary stages in order to manifest that vision which will give you a great deal of satisfaction and actually once you've done one you can do another right so we have the power to create things i think that's why the old biblical line is that humans are created in the image of God. So if you're happy to use the word God, what it would be is the creative power of the universe. And we're little mini creative powers made in the image of the bigger one. And if we participate in the way that that works, then we could become quite we're quite magical in a way because magic really is taking an idea of something that hasn't yet happened or a, a, a thing that doesn't exist and taking it out of your head and making it arrive in the real world. Of course, in Harry Potter, the magic happens with Shazam like that. But we know that mostly things are embedded in time and so we have to go through various processes. 
but I've experienced that time will shift and change according to your vision. Oh, I'm sorry if I, my screen went dark, or maybe you didn't see that, but I did. Um, so if, if you um, are focused, totally focused, on what you are doing and your vision, then time kind of works with you and doesn't hold you back necessarily. Now that is my general introduction to the 10 laws of creation and I'm going to make a series of 10 more videos and explain to you as we go along how this system unfolds. And right at the moment, this is January 2023, I'm also offering people an online course. So go to my website theolin.com or email me actually that's better theolin at theolin.com and you can ask me about it and I'll send you the syllabus. If you happen to see this after January 2023 and the course has already started please don't hesitate to email me because uh, later on down the line you may be able to hop on the bandwagon again. So the 10 laws of creation look out for the series. They'll be coming down the line quite shortly. Many blessings.